Hey guys, welcome to my channel, French Fries and Jesus. I don't know what that was. I really don't know what all I'm gonna be doing on this channel. Um, I originally, originally wanted to do something with food, obviously, but right now I actually wanna give a testimony of something that I've been dealing with for the past, I wanna say, two years. And um, I really felt a nudge from the Lord to share my testimony. So, um, for those of you who know, I recently was going through a time in my life where I was having a really hard time on conceiving and um, I was in a very, very dark place. It's really not the best place to be in when you're struggling with infertility. So that is something I want to talk about with y'all today is infertility. And a lot of people are like, they don't want to have to hear about it. It's taboo. It's, it's um, something that, you know, women don't talk about and all that stuff. And I really feel like this is something that needs to be talked about because there are so many women who are struggling with this and they feel so alone. So for me, I want to backtrack about maybe going on a year. I, my husband and I recently had decided on our one year anniversary that we were going to start trying. And we thought right away, oh, this is gonna be easy. We're gonna come out pregnant, like right there and then. Um, I didn't think I was gonna have any issues, nothing like that. So a couple of months had passed by and we were like, dang, like why are we not coming out pregnant? Like what's going on here? Um, you know, maybe at, at that time I was working at a very stressful job. I was working in the medical industry. So um, it was pretty stressful. I was on my feet all day. Um, but I mean, there's plenty of moms who work on their feet all day and they still come up pregnant. So I, whatever. But anyways, um, so we, we weren't having the best luck coming out pregnant. So... I had went to a doctor, I'm not going to mention her name, um, because I know some people do go to her, and right away she diagnosed me with PCOS and that I could not come out pregnant, I couldn't have children, and I was devastated, but I, I accepted it, I was like, whatever, you know, fine, um, I'm just going to accept it. And this is during the time where I didn't really know my identity as a daughter in Christ and I didn't know how to take authority and speak life into this situation. So after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get a second opinion. I don't believe this. There's no way that the Lord would, you know, not let me have kids. That was my mindset. This is what I thought. Like he would not let me have kids. Um, so I went to Dr. Canterbury. A lot of people that I know go to her. She is amazing. She really talks to you. She doesn't get upset if you ask the same question in different, um, in different phrases or whatever. Like she, she really talks to you and really sympathizes with you and um she's really in it for the for the creation of life really like she loves i mean she obviously loves children and um so she she confirmed that i don't have pcos and that i am able to have children from what it looked like in the uh test results that i had did with the previous doctor so our next step was to okay you know what Let's get more blood work done for you and let's because I I only have one thyroid so that can kind of like mess with pretty much everything. Um, it's really crazy how your thyroid like takes over everything in your body from your gut to like just everything. Um, so did blood work. She said I was great. Um, I'm ovulating and it was just good news whatever like it was just awesome. 
so then I go, you know, we talk, me and my husband talk, and I'm like, yay, like, I'm ovulating, like, let's do this. Like, I bought a bunch of packages of the, um, the, the test, the uh, fertility testing kit where you track your ovulation. And, um, and I was like a dictator with that and with my husband. Like, I pretty much made him my sex slave. Sorry, dad. But this is the truth. Like, I really had him on a schedule. My poor husband. He, well, finally he got to the point, he came home and he's like, man, I just got off of work and I feel like I'm having to work again just trying to be able to come out pregnant. I was that bad. And so, what was really devastating during that time was every month the test results would come back negative. Um, and I remember that every month I would lie down on the bathroom floor and I would cry and cry and cry for hours and hours and hours. And I, I just didn't understand why it was becoming so hard to come out pregnant. And so I really felt like I was never going to come out of this place of, um, darkness really I I would talk to friends and you know they would you know give me the best advice that they could and they um, especially with scripture and we would pray and we would just worship and um, I would I really tried letting it go and really letting it letting it go to the Lord but I kept holding on and Finally, I decided to talk about it on Facebook and it was the last time that I had took a preg pregnancy test <clears throat> and I talked about how devastating it was each month and all that stuff. And so many women messaged me on Facebook and they had talked about how they went 10 years, 11 years, 5 years whatever on how they tried and tried and tried some came out pregnant some still didn't um some adopted and it was really encouraging because for once i didn't feel alone and it's really important to to get yourself surrounded with women and just with family like at church and with the community that's at your church. And I'm so lucky that I go to a church that it's all about family and that there's no shame and that anything that you're going through, they walk life out with you and they equip you. And it's just amazing to have that, um, that support system. So finally, my husband and I were just like, you know what, we're just, we're not going to continue trying. Um, but still was like in the back of my mind. And I was always like, okay, fingers crossed, maybe, just maybe this time we'll get a positive result. And still nothing really happened. Um, it wasn't until one night I had an encounter with the Lord, and I really won't go into details because that was during my secret time with the Lord, but um, the Father, he's, <laughs> he's just so good, and I was really able to let it go this time, and He reminded me who He is and what He says that He will do. And that he is not a God that lies. And so finally I came into a place of contentment. And it's been the best thing ever for me. Of being able to really just to let go. And to not worry about that anymore. And um, <clears throat> just to be happy with where I'm at. And in that time of, of being content... I've grown so much more in my walk with the Lord and my faith has grown so much more and just just 
tasting his goodness has been so good and I, I, I can't explain just how amazing he is and how faithful he is regardless of the situation. Um, so recently my husband and I decided for me to go to the fertility center in San Antonio and just to see like where I'm at and everything. Um, my husband really wanted to just make sure that I'm okay uh, because Dr. Canterbury did, you know, like I said, the test and the blood work, but the fertility center does a lot more in depth. Um, and so I went yesterday, had my appointment. Uh, my husband did a essay, which is a semen analysis, and um, <laughs> uh, the doctor pretty much was just like, that boy good. And I'm like, yeah, I know, because he did it over, over here in Corpus at Dr. Canterbury's, and when Dr. Canterbury called, she was like, he has the best sperm that I've ever seen, and my husband's in the background like, like, yeah, that's me, and I'm over here like, oh boy, like, bye. Anyways... So, went to the appointment yesterday, and those people are so amazing. I mean, if I could give like a thousand stars to this uh, facility, man, the, the, the nurses, the doctors, they are just, they are really in it for the creation of life, and they truly love the Lord there. Um, there's no shame in talking about the Lord and about our beliefs, and... Um, I like anyone who's struggling with infertility like I recommend y'all to go to this place and really um, you know just do what you feel like you need to do especially for a uh, I guess a sense of relief or um, just knowing what's going on with with your body um, so I'm actually gonna go into detail not into detail of what they did or what but into details of what they told me and yesterday, I they did a sonogram and they counted eggs. Um, both my ovaries, I have the normal normal range, which is I, I cried because I was just like, this is like the best news ever to like know that I have um, eggs <laughs> in my body. Uh, and then um, he sat with me and really talked with me and told me the next steps. Um, they did find a polyp, which, um, he said it didn't look cancerous, but it can turn into cancer, but it's such an easy procedure to remove, but that step won't be taken yet until I do a HSG, which is another test where they, um, put dye in my Philippian tubes and they will see if my tubes are open or closed. So this, this, that itself became a new like, oh, like, okay, Lord. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. At first, I really didn't know how to feel about it, but then like Holy Spirit just came into the office where I was sitting at and just gave me his sweet aroma and just letting me know that like it's all good you know really like the goodness of the Lord is just amazing and so um, I was like okay that's the next step and he said depending if my tubes are open then we can go on to the next stage of um, going on Clomid, um, which I had told him that I was on Femera for three months before, um, sometime last year, and it really did not work for me. Um, it, I, my body was really sensitive to it, so it was just something that didn't work for me. Um, for a lot of other women, it works, so just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you, but, um, now, if my tubes are closed, then it goes on to more of a bigger, more expensive type of procedures like IVF and all that stuff. And um, 
So my husband and I talked about it yesterday and if my tubes are closed, then I can't naturally have kids. Um, but we are not going to do the, the IVF or anything like that. We, we have peace about it because there's adoption and it, it's, it's in the word. It's, it's scriptural. It's, it's in Deuteronomy 18, 10 or 10, 18, I believe in it. It talks about how, you know, he defends the fatherless and, that we are to care for the widowers, widowers and the orphans. So, um, adoption is something that may be in the talks for Ray and I in our next step. Uh, we will, you know, that'll probably be another video. I really wanted to just share my testimony in that um, with y'all because. There really is light at the end of the tunnel. And even right now, you may feel like you're in such a dark place and having to deal with people constantly asking you, when are you gonna have a baby? Or literally people coming up to you, rubbing your stomach or telling your husband, do you not know how it's done if she's not coming out pregnant? Or um, just the constant questions. I know how that is and I know how um, how it could really stress you out. So there is peace during this time, during this season that you're in. And you know, I, 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 I pray for you and I, and I speak life into your wombs and I just command them to open up and to bring life forth and that during this time you see the goodness don't let the enemy steal your joy. The Lord is in the waiting with you and he cries with you. The Lord loves you so much. I, I promise you that there is peace in this and that really let it go and let the Lord do what he needs to do. Pray, ask, and you shall receive, and it may not look like what you want it to look like, but I, I, I promise you there, there's joy and there's peace in this, and I, and I just, I pray that you find that, and I pray that the Lord just starts coming into your dreams and starts speaking to you and starts giving you peace right now if you're watching this video and you're struggling with this, or if you know someone who's struggling with this. Share this with them. I'm, you're not alone. So I thank you for watching this video, this testimony of mine, and um, I encourage you to look out for more videos that will be coming up on French fries and Jesus. I can't wait to start doing more um, vlogging. Um, I do have other films that are coming up but I was really, um, the Lord really wanted me to share this first of all videos that I decided to start posting up. So um, thank you all for watching.